welcome back to my channel. If you are new, my name is Courtney and today I am so excited because I am doing something that I've never done on my channel before and that is working with air clay. And I have to say I am addicted. It is so fun. I can't wait to show you these really easy DIYs. Thank you to Kara for sponsoring today's video. Now let's get in and have some fun and work with some air clay. Let's go. Before we get into the projects, this is what you are going to need. So some type of air clay, Crayola makes some. This is by Jovi. There's also one called DAS that you can get at craft stores very easily. You're going to need a little um, bowl of water, a rolling pin, and then an X-Acto knife, and then some type of surface where the clay won't stick. I work on a silicone mat, so I'm just going to use that. But if you don't have that, you can put down some parchment paper. For this project, I wanted to make some faux concrete beads. Now it's no secret that I love to work with wooden beads on this channel. And so I knew as soon as I bought this clay that I wanted to try to make some type of bead. So what I did is I ripped off a piece of the air dry clay. Now the, the, the package that you're not using, make sure you go ahead and close that up because it will start to dry out. Don't just leave it open on your workspace. And I'm going to roll these in to little balls about the size of a ping pong ball, maybe just a little bit smaller. And the beauty of making faux concrete beads is if you look at this picture, I Googled concrete beads and I came across this picture online. You can see all the little imperfections in the beads. So if these beads aren't perfectly smooth, that's great. This is a perfect beginner project because you don't have have to try to get it perfect but you certainly can and the way you do that is just add a little bit of water water is going to help you smooth out that air clay and all I'm going to do is go through I wanted 10 beads so I'm just going to go through and roll out 10 little balls Here I have just a Dollar Tree charger and I'm gonna put down a piece of parchment paper and now I'm ready to poke the holes in my beads. So I'm just gonna be using a Dollar Tree dowel rod and I'm just gonna poke through the center of the bead. Now I am dipping the end of my dowel rod into water because when I poke through the um, bead, I wanna try to get the inside as smooth as I can because I am gonna be feeding some twine through this. And if you have rough little bits, it will make it a little bit harder to thread through. And then again, you can doctor it up you can leave it as rough as you want you can make it as smooth as you want and it's just kind of your preference how you want to make it look and I'm just gonna go through and do this for all 10 beads Here they all are. Now I'm going to let them dry for about 24 hours and then I'm going to roll them so that the underneath side can get dry. You just need to make sure that when you're working with air clay that anything that is against something, so for instance the bottom of the beads that are against parchment paper, that they also have an opportunity to get exposed to air so that they can dry. To paint these, I'm going to be using some of this stone gray Rust-Oleum paint. Now, here is something um, that I wish I'd done that I'm going to share with you. So when I went to spray paint these, I was spray painting them for full coverage. But as you'll see in a minute how I started painting them, honestly, this spray paint, the best thing you can do is do maybe one or two light sweeping coats on one side, let them dry and then roll it over. Still kind of letting the natural color of the bead show through because that will definitely help you achieve a really good concrete look in the end. To get these to look a little bit more like concrete, I started with some Waverly chalk paint in the color Elephant and I took a little makeup sponge that I had from Dollar Tree and I just cut a little piece off and I went in and I just started sponging all of the beads and once they were done, this is kind of the difference, you can kind of see a side by side of one bead here that is just the plain spray paint and then one with one layer of color on it. Once 
once all the beads were covered with the elephant and I liked how with the elephant with the elephant jack paint and I liked how it looked I took some of this paint it's the color castle by folk art their chalk paint and it's kind of a grayish color and so I decided to go ahead and go with this because it had a little instead of doing like a white or a light gray because I wasn't trying to get a galvanized look I was trying to keep with a stone look so that is why I went with this shade and I'm going to go in and do the same thing stamp around and then after I stamp this on I go back and do a little bit more of the elephant and I just keep stamping until I get it looking the way that I like. Once the beads were dry, I took five pieces of twine and these were about three feet long. I think I, I, I way overdid it. And so I think you could probably, if you decide to tie it, how I'm going to tie it, you could probably get away with about two feet of twine, maybe a little less. And so I'm going to take the five pieces and knot one end, and then I'm going to, to tape together the other end so that I have kind of a nice little secure part to feed through my beads. And I'm going to start by feeding a bead through and then I'm going, instead of just having the beads stacked onto each other, I decided to go ahead and tie a knot and I had seen a picture, um, I think on Pinterest where there were some wooden beads that had twine knotted between them and I thought it was really pretty. So I decided to go ahead and do that for this. So I'm just going to thread a bead, tie a knot, thread a bead, tie a knot, thread a bead until the entire thing is full of beads. Once the beads were all on there, I love the look of the beads with the little twine knots, but I was not loving my, um, I don't know, in my mind, I was like, oh, I'm going to have kind of a very minimalistic tassel. Well, they were a little too wimpy. I don't know, like wimpy. We're going to call them wimpy tassels. So if you want to have fuller tassels, you certainly could make plans to go ahead and do that properly. And I may be making more work for myself, but this is how I figured out how to add a few more pieces in there. So because I cut my twine for this way too long, I had some extra pieces, so I just cut two little sections. And then what I decided to do was just kind of hot glue the tips together. And then I spread apart the five little pieces that were on my bead strand and kind of just shoved it up there and glued it. And you can't even tell, like I pulled the other pieces around it, you can't tell at all. So that was my quick fix for it. But again, you certainly could pre-plan it a little better than I did and go ahead and make the tassels. And then if you don't like the full look, you can always go trim, you know, little pieces of it off. So that's the last step here. And then again, to seal it, I'm just gonna use some of the matte sealer. And before I show you the finished project, I wanted to quickly show you, these were the two sealers that I used for all these projects. One is matte clear, one is gloss clear. Both are by rust and work really well. to take a quick minute to tell you about care of I was excited when they reached out to me because health is one of my focuses for 2021 it's never too late to jump on that bag and wagon and they sent me a box based on my answers to a quiz that I took this is my package of vitamins and supplements and I love the convenience of it because it all comes packaged up in this. It's personalized with a fun little fact. And something that's really awesome is you can actually compost these vitamin packs. So if that's something that is important to you, they definitely keep the environment in mind. The different flavors, the protein powder, the vanilla is so good. The quick sticks taste like pixie sticks. So all you have to do is go online and you take the quiz using the link that I will have down below to see which vitamins and supplements care of will recommend for you. It'll show you what they are. You can go in and select what you would like to do. And they are offering you 50% off by using my code COTC50. Now back to the Airclay DIYs. 
Now this DIY is where you get to uh, do a little bit of texturing to your clay. So again, I ripped off a hunk of clay and now I'm just rolling it out with this Dollar Tree rolling pin. If you see this rolling pin, this is a great little tool to keep for projects like this. And I'm rolling it out. I don't want it super thin, but then again, I don't want it super thick. I'm gonna end up wrapping it around just a plain candle, glass candle that I have. And once I get it rolled out to where I know it's going to cover my candle, I'm gonna start mixing in my sand. So I have some Dollar Tree sand here and I'm just gonna roll it directly into my clay, not pushing down super hard. So if you're gonna mix something in, go ahead and roll your clay out a little bit thicker than you want it. So that way when you go to press in whatever texture items you wanna add, you still have um, some ability to go ahead and roll out your clay hope that makes sense. So I, like I said, I'm going to be using sand, but there's so many different things you could use. You could use, um, the little pebbles from Dollar Tree. You could get crazy and use like pepper or Himalayan sea salt or, um, crushed shells, whatever you want to texture up your clay. Now here is the candle that I'm gonna be wrapping. Like I said, it's just a plain glass candle and I'm gonna go ahead and um, wrap it around my candle and then I'm gonna go ahead and trim off the extra pieces that I don't need using my X-Acto knife. And then once I get that done, um, I'm gonna have a seam where the two, I guess, sides of it connect. And this is the best way to get two pieces to connect together. So first, um, on the edge of one piece, go ahead and score it lightly with your X-Acto knife. And then go ahead and also score the other side. Then you're gonna take some water and put the water along your score line and then go ahead and smush them together. And then at that point, you can decide how much of a seam you want. You can try to flatten it out. You can leave it as a big bump. It's up to you, but just use that water to help you get the look that you want. Once the seam on the side was how I wanted it, then I trimmed off the extra on the top and I left about a half an inch so that I could fold over the clay over the rim of the candle holder. And again, just trimming and, you know, pushing it down. Again, I want it to kind of be organic so I was not going for perfection, that's for sure. And just using water wherever I needed to and then I could always pat in some more sand. And then the last step for this is I am gonna go ahead and seal it with a matte sealer just because it does have the sand and I don't want the sand to eventually, you know, kind of fall off everywhere. So I will seal it with that and then that's it. This little candle holder is all finished. Working with clay made me realize I should make a little trinket tray to put my rings on because you definitely don't want to work with clay while you're wearing jewelry. So I'm going to go ahead and I grabbed a chunk of clay and I'm going to roll it out and I want to cut a circle. So I'm just going to roll this out and then I'm just going to use this little glass ornament. It is a Christmas ornament. ornament that didn't get packed away. And I'm just going to use that as my template to go ahead and cut a circle. And then once I get the circle cut, I did want to imprint it with some leaves. So I'm going to use these little spring leaves from Dollar Tree, this greenery, and I'm going to press them down into the circle and then do a gentle roll with my rolling pin, not putting a lot of pressure, but just enough to get them imprinted. And then I'll be ready to work on the rim of my little trinket tray. For the rim of my trinket tray, I'm just rolling out a piece of clay, like a nice long snake. And then to get this attached, I'm going to take the little uh, bottom of the tray here. And as you can see, I'm using my um, X-Acto knife and I scored it and then I put a little bit of water on it to kind of help it stick. You can also, I had also scored the snake 
couple of snake. The uh, <laughs> rim piece, I didn't show that on camera. That just will help it adhere. And then you're gonna go in and go ahead and use water to get all your little seams, especially the base of the trinket tray to the outer rim. Make sure you get water in there and get those nice and adhered. And again, just your preference, how smooth you want it to look. If you want it to be rough, you can go in and add more things to it, imprints, whatever you want to do. But I'm just going to use some water to get it all smoothed out and then I will set it aside to dry. Once the tray was completely dry, and I do want to say I let it dry face up for 24 hours and then I flipped it over because the bottom needed to be dried as well and then I let that dry for 24 hours. Now I'm going to go in and go ahead and paint just one full coat of white chalk paint. Then I'm going to take some Arteza gold paint that I had and water it down and go ahead and paint the little leaf um, imprints as well as the rim of the trinket tray. And I kind of went in and just did a light coat with the gold and then other areas I went in with a heavier coat. And then once that is all dry, I'm going to take it outside and I want it to have a glossy finish. So I am going to spray a glossy sealer on it. You could certainly use Mod Podge if you'd like to, if you prefer to use that. And then this little trinket tray is all finished. For this air clay DIY, I wanted to make two different napkin rings. So what I did is I went ahead and cut out a piece of air clay that is pretty thick and I just cut it into a rectangular shape. And I'm going to take one of my paint bottles and then a piece of parchment paper. You could also use saran wrap and I'm going to wrap it around the paint bottle. And then I'm going to take my clay and go ahead and shape it around the paint bottle so that it will get the napkin ring shape. Now here's the thing about air clay and you need to keep this in mind that it does shrink a little bit as it dries. So you're only going to want to leave it on here for about an hour, maybe an hour and a half, and then go ahead and take it off and then let it finish drying the rest of the way. So once it's wrapped around, I'm just going to take some water and I'm just going to go ahead and get the seam how I want it to look. And then I will set it side to dry. After I got it all set, I realized, oh, you know what? I want to imprint it. So I took a piece of Dollar Tree greenery and I just very carefully smushed it down into my napkin ring to make an imprint of it. And then I set it aside to dry. Now that the napkin ring is all dry, I'm going to take some of this paint in the color Fresh Foliage and I'm going to water it down and simply just paint the leaf imprint. And then once that is dry, I am going to seal this, but I'm going to use a matte sealer on this because again, I still want it to have that kind of stone organic, really just, you know, not shiny look and then let that dry. And then this napkin ring is all finished. And then I went ahead and made another napkin ring the exact same way. And then what I'm going to do to paint that one is I'm just going to take some turquoise paint and water it down again and just kind of randomly paint the bottom of it, the rim of it. And then that one I am going to seal with a glossy finish.
For the last DIY, I'm going to be working with a different clay. Now this one is by DAS or DAS. I'm really not sure how you're supposed to pronounce it. And it's in the color terracotta, which is really awesome that it's already comes in this color. And what I'm going to do is roll out a piece of this so that I can cut about a 16 inch, or not 16 inches, sorry, that would be way too long. A six inch long piece of clay. I'm making a rectangular shape and it's about a half an inch thick. You do want this a little bit thicker because this is going to be an air plant hanger. Um, I am a cereal plant killer, so I'm really hoping that I can keep this plant alive. Once I get my rectangle cut out, then each of the corners needs a little hole poked through so that you'll be able to thread some twine in it later. So I, first I started using my Cricut tool, but then I realized a nail was the perfect thing to poke the holes. And then of course you can dip that nail in a little bit of water to help smooth out the little tunnel that your hole has made. To let it dry, I took a Waverly chalk paint bottle and wrapped it with parchment paper. You could also use saran wrap and I just draped this over and let it dry for about 16 ish hours. And then I took it off so that the underneath side could dry as well. And then the next step will be to paint it. And this is what it looks like. As you can tell, that section is still very dark. So that's what needs to dry once you take it off the paint bottle. Now comes the fun part. So I wanted to go ahead and splatter paint this with some white chalk paint. So I'm just going to use several different brushes, different sizes, different, you know, stiff, thin, all that stuff to get kind of different types of specs, I guess you could say. And then I'm going to let that dry. And then my last step is going to be to go ahead and attach my twine and then go ahead and seal it. To attach the twine, I just cut four pieces and then I flipped it over and tied a knot on the bottom side and then left a little bit of a tail and then I just pulled all four pieces up and made sure that it was straight and then I tied a knot at the top and then trimmed it and it was ready for my air plant. For this bonus DIY, I wanted to make some faux donuts. So to make these, all I did was take a ball of clay, kind of patted it down, punched out the middle of a circle, and then let it dry. Now for painting the donut, I'm mixing some of the hazelnut Waverly chalk paint with some white, and I'm going to go ahead and paint these donuts. I'm going to do two coats so that it's fully covered. And then I was ready to work on the icing. So for the icing, I'm going to be using some of this caulk from Dollar Tree, and I'm going to water it down just a little bit and then add whatever color I want the icing to be. So I wanted to make two pink donuts and one brown or chocolate donut I should say and I'm just gonna mix the paint color in there and then just using this little um, white spatula I'm just going to spread it on there now the thicker you make this um, the more it'll kind of sit raised up if you water it down more it'll be more likely to drip down the sides and be a more thin consistency then once the icing is on there, I have these sprinkles. They are faux sprinkles that I bought in a pack from Amazon. I will definitely link everything I possibly can down below that I've used in today's video. And I just went ahead and put some sprinkles on these and then let them dry. Once they were dry, I just sprayed them with some of the gloss sealer. And then there you go. These little donuts are perfect for decor on your coffee bar, tea bar. If you're having a brunch or perhaps a birthday party, sleep over in the morning, you can make a little tablescape. You could use them for photo props or whatever you want to use them for. But it's just something fun that you can make. And then also a great little craft for your kids. Here we have 
have one more quick look at today's projects. I have to say that working with the air clay was really fun. I really love to try new things and I definitely see myself making more air clay projects. Let me know down below which one of these projects was your favorite. Also let me know if you've ever worked with air clay before. I would love to know that. Here are some more videos that you guys might enjoy and I will see you in the next one. Bye!